Virgin, your original plan. It was, it was, a, it was, a, it was my fault. It was very much a Captain Marvel with the team together. And then our writer, Meredith Scott, wanted to do it organically. Let's meet Kamala, get to know her. She's our Peter Parker character, very relatable. And then through her, we meet a character, and then another character, and they start to discover this plot. And each character they meet, the stakes start to change. And it's very organic and natural. And, and each time you meet a character, you get to see how they interact with the other characters. And it's those relationships, personal connections, either conflict or friendship, that girls are especially interested in. So it's super organic. understand Marvel, but also understand sort of where Marvel needs to go and what kind of characters are going to work. Um, and you look at each one of these characters and sure they have different backgrounds, but they also represent different kind of struggles and different issues that a lot of people have. And that's really why we wanted those characters together, um, because we felt like them kind of playing off of each other. We had a lot to learn from one another. Yes, there would be a lot of conflict as well. Um, a lot of humor, a lot of heart. Um, but seeing them kind of come together, not as a team, this isn't necessarily about teamwork. It's just them coming together as like friends, as allies, as people pulling each other up. And I think that's such a strong message for I feel like the younger generation and the generation that you see today is people becoming so much more actively involved, whether it's in politics or their community. That is the stuff that I think is inspiring to us. And we wanted to kind of tell that story of these kids that do exist. They're real kids. They exist. Um, and this is very much sort of symbolic of, uh, of, of, those, of those, that, that generation. down at the end. Of course, every great story has an origin myth and a backstory. So I'd love to hear a little bit about how uh, this film came to be. That is secure to stay. Uh, <laughs> well, on the one side, there was a lot of research and, and a lot of evidence from consumer products, such as box office, that um, girls and women were engaging in the brand with increasing numbers and really um, and then we wanted to create something that was specifically directed at them, but that boys and all audiences could enjoy. And meanwhile, publishing, Dr. Tuckman, you wrote the email characters for publishing. Yeah, so I mean, I, I, I started as out as a comic book editor, and I've seen such an evolution of, of women coming into comics, girls coming into comics, and we have such, such fantastic female heroes, and we've always had fantastic female heroes, and these are the ones that people just wanted more content for. And we got lucky enough, Marvel like let us take these characters um, into the next phase. Um, characters like Ms. Marvel and Squirrel Girl, and, and God, we've never done that before. How, how cool is that? They're, they're an animation form, and people have been waiting, this, waiting for this for, for quite some time. Um, and that's really, yeah, that's, that's really where it started. So we took a lot of these characters, and we had lots of conversations with girls, and they told us which ones they're emotionally connected to the most. And they even a lot of ideas um, that they could articulate about what kind of stories and personal connections they wanted to see. And from that, we sort of put together an idea that we want to do this thing. Um, and then we put it out to writers. And Margaret's bringing you right there. Margaret's um, not a writer, guys. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the main idea that you know the Avengers or Captain Marvel or something would put together this team. And Margaret's idea was no. They we start with Kamala and they meet each other one by one and it's very organic. And there's this threat that's looming and they discover it. And as they meet each other, they uh, they have conflict um, and friendship and, and it sort of builds over time. And that was Margaret's pitch. And so that's how we got here. I want to ask uh, you all a few more questions, but first, because this is my first time meeting the voice talent. And so isn't it neat to put faces and voices in the start? <laughs> Milano, what kind of superheroes do you grow up with? 
And what was it like for you to be able to now give voice to superheroes like these? Because you're very different superheroes, I know, than the ones I grew up with. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, I did grow up watching the X-Men and uh, Spider-Man. Um, I, I don't remember specifically as like a very young child having any really female superheroes. I did love She-Ra. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, but I, there, there, there certainly wasn't anyone that looked like me or that I could personally identify with as, you know, an Iranian girl. Um, and so to have, you know, a, a Muslim brown woman is something that I never would have even thought would be in the realm of possibility as a child. And when you first got that call, hey, we've got this character, it's a Muslim superhero, what was your initial reaction? I had heard about Kamala a long, like a, a while before I got the, uh, the audition, and I was already really excited about her. When I got the audition, <clears throat> I don't think I realized it was, with auditions, <laughs> you kind of like don't put hope into any of them. <laughs> and so it was just like, okay, cool, all right, let's just do this. And then when I got it, that's when I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I get to be the voice of this character that I had heard of before, and that I, I realized the importance of very early on before I had I had auditioned for. So it was huge for me. Squirrel Girl is also a very different character. I mean, she's... What do you mean, how so? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Holy macadamia, that's where to begin. Yeah. I mean, she's just, she, she seems like so much fun to play. And what was great for me, as I sat watching this with my daughter, was going, wow, these are not all stick figure girls, you know, and, and women, female characters. It was really great to see all shapes and sizes and all types of women. What, what were your thoughts on Squirrel Girl when you first met her, so to speak? Uh, I was really most attracted to Squirrel Girl's positivity and outlook on the world, that she believes in friendship, she believes in doing the right thing, and will find a way to make that happen by any means necessary. They're, they're pretty awesome, these two, and I think yeah. it's very rare that we see the female characters in charge. I'd love to, to hear from our male voice talent. Why? What was, that like? <laughs> what was that like not being the focus of attention all the time? Terrible! <laughs> no, it was, it was really cool. I love backing this project solely because of that, um, where we get to like let you guys it and um, and my character's more of like kind of like more vulnerable sort of brooding angsty teen um, and you guys are powerful mentally and physically and it's nice just to like follow that there's they're good role models so it's I'm happy to be where I am we have questions from our audience I would love to look like we've got one right here yeah, well, first of all I think today it's just so wonderful to see powerful I think they already exist, right? Uh, is someone here who can speak to that? But I'm pretty sure the they're costumes, here. they're at Target. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a whole range of awesome um, action dolls and uh, clothes and stuff you can put in your room, and they're so amazing and adorable. I want to wear them. Oh, there's one up there. Oh, I see it. Do you see it? Thank you. Oh, yes. There you go. Oh, my fantastic uh, sweatshirt for kids. That's amazing. There's a Squirrel Girl uh, sweatshirt at Target right now. It has a little furry front pocket, a little tail, and a little hood with the Squirrel Girl face on it. So it's amazing. October 1st, Target. <laughs> Joanne, are your costumes also available at? Yes, at Target. Yes, okay. they're available. <laughs> at Target. I have some of the dolls. Actually. Any other questions from our audience? We've got one up there in the blue shirt. Is there going to be a sequel to this? Um, I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> have been, no. uh, we have an announcement coming very soon because there are some things to announce. Things. <laughs> very soon. Sorry, but not yet. <laughs> but not yet. Very soon. <laughs> <laughs> Via announcement, things will be announced through announce 
stories at Marvel is very much about these characters are the characters that people know and love. We never alter the DNA too much. It's very much about the core character identity. So what you're going to see here is what you see in comics and the spirit of it will be in, um, you know, in hopefully in the movie. I haven't seen it. I don't know. But sort of that amazing um, tough uh, kick butt Captain Marvel uh, is, 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 very, is true across the board. We don't feel the need all the time to keep all of the different timelines in order. It would drive everybody crazy. But um, what we try and never do is contradict each other. So we try and always make sure that we know what the other stories surrounding that character are and just make sure that we don't contradict them. Also, all of these cartoons show up in the live action film. <laughs> <laughs> They're just They're watching like in the background. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Captain America's favorite TV show is Warriors. <laughs> Actually, though, while we're talking about it, because one of the things that first struck me about this was in addition to seeing how refreshing and wonderful it was to see such a wide array of non-traditional superheroes was the look of it. It reminded me of a lot of the cartoons that I grew up with. Let's just say it was a while ago. Uh, it was a very different look from what we see in animation today. And I'm wondering if the folks at the end want to talk a little bit about the choices that you made and how these characters and the whole film looked. Well, Alfred, our supervising director, is right there. Yeah. Um, I think uh, we just wanted it sort of bright and bold and colorful and simple. Um, we wanted the characters to be very expressive. We had a lot of conversations with girls, like I mentioned, and they wanted the characters to be very expressive with their character stories and emotions to really come across. So a lot of it is in the face and the eyes. We wanted pretty hair. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and we, uh, and Clea, is Clea here? Hey. Clea was in charge of directing these conversations with girls, and she put dozens of styles, and like a lot of the more sophisticated styles, and the edgier styles, and CG styles. You know, they, they wanted characters who were just expressive and simple, and they sort of gravitated towards something a little more anime, and that's where we ended up. I want to give a chance to Boo Boo and Camille to weigh in as well. Uh, yeah! yeah. 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 Uh, in addition to hoping that there will be uh, costumes for your characters for Halloween. <laughs> what would you hope that kids watching this film, and grown-ups for that matter, would, would take away from it after seeing it? Um, I think for me, going back to just, you know, I think it's interesting that kids growing up will just, they won't know that things have been any different. Like, it's nice to see that they'll, they'll see these characters of all different races, of, of, you know, men and women, you know, working together. They won't know that there has been anything they don't know that this is the first of its kind. And so I think that's nice, you know. So I don't know if it's something that they're taking away. It's just nice that they're gonna grow up seeing this, you know. I think that's a nice song. And um, I think for me, uh, pertaining to my character, I just really feel and hope that the audience takes away um, the, the kids, the understanding that, you know, not everything is black and white. There's a lot of gray area and to know how to operate in that gray area, but to do the right thing. Any other questions from our audience? I know it's a, a school night for many of our members <laughs> in the audience, so we won't go too much longer. Stay in school. <laughs> no, that was just a wave. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I'll ask one more question, but one of the things I found refreshing as well is that as long as we were going to have female superheroes, there were also female baddies in there. Was that a distinct choice as well? Well, I think that, you know, as there's, there's, you know, uh, both men and women, uh, there are two, side, two sides to every coin, so uh, we have to represent, I think it's the wrong message to send that all women are good and all men are bad, or vice versa, so I think it's, it's an Even though it's true. I think that's true. <laughs> yeah, even though it may be true, um, it's the wrong message to send. So uh, we just, you know, we just thought, of, you know, it's, it's a, I think this is, you know, Armor Rising is a, very dimensional piece. It shows uh, every side of the human experience, and um, 
And I think the most important thing for us is that it actually does offer a unique experience for all genders, but uh, this is, it's definitely a female forward piece. And I think we're all very proud that we have sort of, it, we're giving girls what we know that they have always wanted, uh, and they have been sorely underserved, uh, which is giving, they, they love action, they love comedy, they love superheroes, and there's no such thing as girls don't like, and then fill in the blank. Girls like everything, like everybody loves them. I think it's also part of creating multidimensional women. Like, no one is perfect, and creating characters with flaws just creates more relatability. Not that we can all relate to this villain, <laughs> per se, but um, but it does open the door creatively for the, for the people that are creating it and the people that are watching it to think of the, the larger capacity for what women can play on TV and film. And final, most important question of the evening, going back to the merch, will there be a, a stuffed animal version of the dog? <laughs> That's what I Actual size, right? Action, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. With the transporter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not, no transporter. Come on. <laughs> Why are we doing this? Not included. There's no children are not included. One last question we've got to take here. Um, well, yes, uh, the Stay True song, the, the Shield Breakout song, was licensed from a young performer who hasn't had a lot of exposure. Um, Born Ready is an original song um, made for the franchise trying to capture the message of our story about, um, about you have what it takes, it's all in you, um, just be yourself and fight hard. And even that, even the line in the song about um, you know, sort of, sort of supporting each other as well. Um, so that was original. Um, Sung by Dove Cameron. Sung by Dove yeah. Cameron. Um, in uh, Marvel Rising Initiation, which is the people shows which are on Marvel HQ right now. Plug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the third song was licensed. Uh, but yes, original. the original song was very important. We see Born Ready as sort of our theme song. Uh, we have a music picture on, on Evo that's gotten a lot of viewership. Um, but yeah, that was... Shockingly, girls like pop music, <laughs> um, and it can be important to communicate the message. You know, I had the opportunity to observe and listen to many girls who saw this movie last week. Um, they were able to articulate back the themes and the messages so clearly and so passionately, and say things like, "This makes me feel powerful," and which is so wonderful. And then they comment how the songs reflect those messages too, and they appreciate it. And there was pop music that they liked, but had messages that they appreciated and underscored the themes and story. And girls like to kick butt and dance. Yes. Yeah. 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 At the same time, if possible. Yeah. Yeah.